Well, hello everybody. Welcome to lesson number three. So once again, my name is Dr. J.D. Swanson. Um, I'm the author of Karate Science, for those who don't know me. Um, what these are, are these particular web series or this webcast series is an idea of 15 minutes of thought. There are ideas that I have as I train through and what we do is we concentrate that single idea around a simple drill and what I do is I'll sort of go through the drill initially and then give you bits and pieces to think about as you go through this. So the idea is that even though my part is only 15 minutes, the idea is it may go for a couple of minutes, you pause, you practice that for 20, 30, 40, 300 reps, then you go into the next section, practice that for 30, 40, 300 reps, and so on. Okay, so your practice, your practice at home, could go anywhere from 20, 30 minutes to an hour and a half, all surrounded about the stroll. And the idea is, is you'll come out with your karate slightly better as a result. So, let's get on with today's class. So from here, this particular drill, what I want to think about is our last drill in, in sort of class number two was about this idea of shifting weight using the rear leg as a driver. What I want to do now is talk about stance transition and then accompanying that with blocks. I'm going to do it through a very, very simple drill. The drill itself is very, very easy. All we're going to do is we're going to make Zen Kutsudachi like so, Gerambarai. From there, you're going to make Agyuke switching to Kibadachi. Kokutsudachi, loading for Shutuke, switching to Kokutsudachi. From there, driving forward, Zen Kutsudachi. Shawman, nice and relaxed, and just simply repeating. That's the idea. So let's just practice through that, and I want to give you a very clear way. So first of all, let's just practice the stances. Remember, Zen Kutsudachi, technically, what we're always told is about shoulder width and a half forward. Depends on your flexibility. We can talk about that in a future class if you like. But it's forward, about shoulder width and a half. It depends on your flexibility, depends on how thick your, how your ankle is. The other piece is how you can drive from the floor up into your bum. This kind of idea. From here, hami, your front knee must be bent. When I was a little boy, they used to grab a broom, they'd put it on my knee and drop it and see if it fell on my toe or not. So make sure that front knee is bent nice and forward that you're dropping down. I'm about six foot one, if you ever meet me. When I'm in stance, I drop to about five foot six at least. So push down on that front leg. From here, 60%. 40%. Just have that nice weight. So don't put everything on this leg, put it here. If we look at the stance from the front, my stance is 50-50 between my heels. Some people say shoulder width apart. That would be from here to here, about this wide. What you find is that's too wide. If you look at my leg from your perspective in the camera, is that this leg is sort of not right behind my bum. I want this leg behind my bum. This is the wall that I'm sticking. So if I have a wall, Imagine it's sticking here. I don't want the stick sticking out here. So if it's holding a wall up like so, here's the stick, here's the wall. You want it directly in that line. If it's out, the wall will collapse. It's the same thing here. Make sure that this is pushing in the direction directly where you want it. Front leg pushes down. Front foot for me, I have my outside edge of my foot pointing straight towards the target. Some people turn in a little bit further. It should always be about in line with that side edge. Some people turn in a little bit further. That depends on the structure of their knee and, and hip joints. For me, that's where it sits. If I turn it too far in, it starts to strain the outside of my knee as I push my knee in the direction I want to go. Straight, straight over the toe. So, Zenkutsudachi, Kibadachi. Here, feet parallel again, about shoulder width and a half out. The outside of the edges as much as possible straight, sitting down on the stance, tuck your bum under. Don't let it sag. So not this, but this. Make that squeeze. Don't Steve Urkel it, if you remember the movie for, or the film from the 19, or the early 90s. Hello everybody, not this. Rather sit, squeeze, and down. The other thing is that we're quite often told to push the knees out. Don't think of it that way. Think of it like I've got a big bit of, um, sort of six by one, wood. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing from my groin up here, down into my foot, and I push it down the wood bows. So the knees simply bend naturally, and then from here, 
push. And that's that, what we are talking about yesterday. The feeling is that then puts my weight into the outside edges of my feet. That's outside tension. Not this active pushing, but rather this flexing. Okay, so Kibidachi sits here. Again, it's critical that the feet aren't pointing out, otherwise you get the side-to-side -side motion. So really pay attention to that. Something that's easy to let slip. Goodness knows I do. The last piece I mentioned already, check that your bum is in line at least with your heels. Not out, otherwise you lose the stability in the stance. The last stance, Kokutsudach. Feel here again, rear foot. The back edge of the foot is in line. Then from here, sit. Just drop straight down and work this foot out like so. Again, squeeze the butt. And from here, put your weight. Do the same flexation that you do. This rotates and pushes into the outside edge. This one here rotates the whole piece from here to here. Keep the front knee bent. And it just rotates onto the outside edge of the foot. Boom, like so. This is the feeling you want. So what we've got is we've got Zenkuts, Kibadachi, and Korkuts. So make sure that you hit each one of those stances. So what I would do is spend a little bit of time right now just making sure that your ankles and hips are warmed up for those stances. Okay, now once you've done that, let's move just through the transition points of the stances. So from here, as I go from Zenkutsudachi Hami, what I want to imagine is that Hami, the way I define it, is it's like a chicken being deboned. You're grabbing hold of its hips and just thunk, this kind of feeling. So I'm here, I'm in Hami, it's not this sort of pull back of the hip, it's rather this opening of the hip. Open, and then Shawman is a closing of the hip. This feeling here. So it's not this sort of rotational kind of motion that we think about, it's an opening, click, and a closing, click. So as we sit here with it open, have that piece where the hips are open, what happens is that my hips, basically as I flex my bum, and as I open my hips out, they stop. That's how me to me. That's how I think of it. Now, as I make the rotation, as I switch, keeping my legs and my knees still and keeping that pressure out, what's gonna happen, there's gonna come a tipping point. If you watch my front knee, I pull, 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 oh, my knee moved, did you see that? That's as I reach the edge of my flexibility. So pay attention, oh, oh, there it is. Oh, oh, there it is, I can feel the pull right here. Pull there. So as that happens, what I want you to do, as soon as that goes, just let the weight out of this leg. Just let a click, lift, and turn to keep it action. So again, it's this feeling of here, feel, click. The rear leg, what happens is this will simply come into position. So I feel, I lift, the rear leg, click, click. So I lift, I feel, and again, I'm trying to emphasize it for you. I feel this, click, this leg comes up. This just makes shape. This just makes shape. The other leg, now I'll focus on this leg, simply makes shape. So feel, feel the grab switch. That's what you want. That's the feeling you want as you make this transition. From here to Kokutsu, feel simply, we now rotate our hip back in the other direction. So what will happen is as I rotate, I feel this pull, this collapsing of this leg. As soon as I feel that, let this leg, let the front leg go again. There. Pull. And as it goes, Feel this leg grab and squeeze down. Whoop, this feeling. Here, there. Now, with the last position, because my bum is right over the top of this heel, simply push, push in the direction you want and drive the whole thing forward to make shawman. Push the whole thing simply forward to make shawman like so. Then, Simply go from here, this beautiful sort of in, push, forward and back feeling. Simply now, debone the chicken. Click, open. So what I want you to practice is from here, one, rotate the hip. As soon as you feel that pressure on the inner thigh, switch. Then from here, open. As soon as you feel that collapse and the pressure here, let it go. 
As soon as you feel push, then open. So, one, two, three, four, five. Have that feeling. Practice it just with your legs first. So go away, practice that for a little while, practice it both sides, get that under control. Okay, from here, now what I want to do is start adding the arms. And we're gonna add them in stages. Because it's one of my sort of theories is that whenever your arms are in, in motion, your hips must also be in motion. So what you find is that people, when they do karate quite often, is they'll be here and I'm gonna exaggerate and make fun, it's part of my job, and I'll add ninja music so it sounds cool. No. Make sure that everything happens together. Together. And this is what we talked about in the first class, right? We're talking about chokazuki. Feel everything. Start and stop. No matter how small that movement is, it should still be there. And this is the same with Tiki Shodan, which really emphasizes this point. So as you're here, make sure, don't fall into the trap of going from here, we're going to go to Aguke. Don't go all separated up. Rather feel the like movements help your feet. Or in this case, initially what's going to happen, because quite often we're upper body dominant, feel the upper body help the lower body get to position. Then eventually, once you understand the lower body, use that to synchronize everything along with your breath. So as we're here, as we're in Gerambarai, all I want you to do is load for Aguke. Okay, don't worry so much about where the hips are going. You can move them slightly forward if you want, but to be quite frank, for the purpose of this drill, I don't need you to do that. So from here, load. Now, as this action comes up, notice how that moves my hips, moves my body, moves my knee, connect together. Then load, then feel this, this, all happen together. Then feel this arm and this leg connected by a piece of string. Click, out. Load, hip. So what I'm using here is I'm using the draw hand, the hikate, to help me understand how to move my hips and legs. Again, this is a purpose for the hikate arm. It's teaching me how to move my body in an easy way. So as I move, eventually you can do away with hikate. But initially, you must understand its purpose. You must understand its purpose to teach you how to do karate. So from here, I'm gonna look where I'm here. So I load, just make the load. Now feel elbow, hip, piece of string, click. Load, piece of string, this, this, this to this. Piece of string here, 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 here to here. Click, here, 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 here. So you end up with this awesome sort of feeling. One, load, two, one. Load, two, load, load, this feeling. So again, allow, take your time with that. Feel the connection of the second part of the movement with the first to understand that nice feeling of ending. This is important as you work through your techniques. So practice that for a little bit. Okay, once you're done with that, now what we wanna do is you wanna coordinate the entire motion together in one fluid transition. So in this particular case, if we're here, instead of me load then push, now I wanna initiate with hip. As soon as I feel that trigger point in my hip, click, then fire the arms. So your arms, believe it or not, move much faster than your legs. So now, as soon as the hip goes, move the hip as fast as you can and speed your arms up through the entire motion. So when I'm here, well, oh, sorry, here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire my hip and throw my arms, but I must land everything at the end together. I don't wanna land with my arms moving later than my feet. My feet can't be finished before my hands. I must finish my hands first. So I'm here, click, here, click, load and fire. Open the hip, here, Fire the hip. Here, fire the hip. Just click it back. So this is the piece. Be careful as you do this. Don't shortchange the block. So I'll try and do it slowly for you. Feel. Ooh, ooh, 
Ooh. Ooh. this kind of feeling. Make sure that it connects together, the whole thing moves, moves together. Here, hip, hip, push, push, this feeling, one, two, three, four. So we're here, one, hip, 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 this feeling, one, two, three, four. Very dynamic, very strong. Again, feeling that beautiful connection between the hip, the legs, and the arms, moving harmoniously. Another way to control this is through your breath. So if I'm here, how I initiate, my hips start moving, my breath flows. With my breath flows the movement. So I'm here. This feeling. Okay? Um, one other piece to think about, especially as you're making those stance transitions, think about where your body center is moving relative to the stances. If I get my handy dandy pen, this covers sort of where my center is and when I'm in Kibidach, when I'm in Zinkutz, of course, pen's behind me. When I'm in Kolkutsadach, pen's in front of me. So as I make these transitions, think one to Kiba, I pull back. When I go to Kolkutsadach, I really think about screwing this hip down. When I go to Zinkutz, I think about driving my hip forward. Right, so all of that's contained within the single drill. Second thing to think about is as I make this transition, think about how <coughs> my body and hip are behaving relative to the technique. Here, open, close it, and squish in. Here, revolve it, pull back. Here, push forward here, pull back. Have that feeling as you go. So once again, you can generally start to speed this up. So thinking here, one, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four. So you can start to play with that. The other thing that's also important is don't think about other than just simple rotations of the feet, my feet aren't sliding in and out. Zenkutsudach, Kibidach, Kolkutsudach, notice on the ball of my foot, which helps me shift my body weight back, are all the same length. Forward, open, across, back. They're all the same length in terms of feet on the floor, determined by my flexibility. So what I want you to do, is work on that drill. Very, very simple, but very important basic stance training and basic blocking training, as well as timing training. Okay, nice and easy. So from here, that ends the class. Hey, us. And what I'd like to do is a good friend of mine emailed me with a question. <coughs> and uh, if you do email me questions, I'll try and respond to them as we go. But, uh, we can go through this one. So what he was questioning me about was tiki shot arm. And as you know, as you go from the hewan, the jodan, uh, hewan nagashuke, to from here, the suki, the question is, is how does this become suki? So when I learned this, I've learned it over my 40 years of training, I've learned it a number of ways. I've learned it as an arkan from on top of the head. I've learned it as sort of round, as almost a, a strike this way, and suki. So if you go to best karate, it says suki, it's very clear. And so the question is, is what's the position of this elbow in the jodan hewanuke? So relative to the forearm and so forth. So one thing, if you lift too high and your shoulder comes up, you lose, and also where's this handset? So if you lift your shoulder high, I've got all this flexibility, which will go back beyond my plane of flexibility. If I lift up and I lift my shoulder up out of the joint. Likewise, if I go too low, my elbow comes all the way back. How can I create this maximum amount of connection to my technique? Well, in training with Leon Sill, um, out of, out of uh, Southern America, right, sort of New Orleans, Alabama, he really indicated to me some really important points here. And so well, most of the credit here must go to him. Number one, this hand. This hand, so 
sorry, wait a minute, to get to the point, the argument was is if I go lower, I can then connect this elbow easier for the punch. Number two, if I lift up, I lose this connection, I can make this stronger connection here and drive in. That's what the, the questioner sort of asked. The thing that's important though is don't forget the, the Jordan Hewa Nagashike. This idea of sweeping back, it's got to cover your face, right? So when you think about this, it's not about the technique going out, it's also quite often about the technique coming back. So as you do that, a couple of things that are really important. Number one, this hand must turn in as tight and strongly towards you. If I keep my shoulder down, which you should never lift your shoulders as you all know, the second I do that, I lose my connection through the side of my body. I must connect down. Here I can feel my lats, I can feel my pecs connecting my arm to my body. So number one, keep your shoulder down. Number two, twist this towards you. If you keep your shoulder down and you twist, just relax this arm. Notice how I've got all this range of movement in my shoulder. If I twist, I stop. So twist this, your forearm hard, round. twist your thumb all the way around, boom. If I twist lower here, notice I've got all this movement here. I want to stop this. I want to use basically the muscles in the front of my shoulder to stop this movement from going back any further. So as I make it, it's all about the Jordan Hewan Nagashiuke. So as you make the block, feel here, right angles, shoulder down, arm twisted, and the arm will stop. That is the most important piece. So it ends up from here, here. And what will happen is my shoulder will stop it directly in line with my body. If I twist hard, keep my shoulder down and my, my elbow flat. Likewise, what I'm also doing is I'm covering my entire face with the sweep, sweeping block that I need to use. Does that make sense? So it's important to complete that first movement. The second thing that's important is how do I then turn this into suki? Because if I just bring my elbow down, it becomes a sort of cross body kind of thing and I lose the connection. The answer is if we go back to the Okinawan styles, what they'll often do is they have this sort of pressing sort of outward kind of motion which Shotokan doesn't have. So what I want you to do is here, think about the definition of suki. Zuki means to thrust. And so how I define that in my head is not where the wrist goes, but rather the action of the elbow. So as I move, I think about my elbow connecting to my body first, and the rest of the technique moves linearly. So that immediately moves here and then changes. So it kind of creates this eh, eh. If you watch, if I just go directly down, it's this linear sort of arc. I'm drawing a circle, whoop, like this. Whoop. If I bring my elbow in, it goes linear arc, which is much tighter, and then in. This feeling. So the motion becomes, from here, this twist, the stop, and then squeeze and push, which makes suki. Here, linear arc, the block completes, goes past my face, twists and stops, then Squeeze and push. Here, here, here. And again, there's a whole lot of hip action that I'm using in there. We'll talk about that in another class. We've got plenty of time. But think about the action of the arm, the elbow, this position here. So the Jordan Hewanuke has blocked my face. Good, right? I like it. From here, now contract here, tight, and push. Movement fast, one, two. One, two. The other thing that's important is that you can also use, because this is a definite stop on the muscles, you can bounce off that stop to make the next technique. If I go loose in this hand, there's no real stop and it becomes this very sort of circular kind of motion. If I have this clear stop through twisting and holding here and my shoulder down, it stops here and I can use that. To bounce off. So I hope that answers the question. Um, and with that, 
I hope you all have an awesome day, train hard, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Take care. Us.